Hi there, it's Scott from GetCloudSkills.com and today I want to show you what you actually get when you purchase a set of labs from my website. As you can see when you go to the website you do get a choice of different exam codes and I'm going to choose the AZ-104 exam code. Now I tried my best to explain what you get but this video is going to be basically showing you what you get because unfortunately I'm not able to provide a free trial because this is a real product that's consuming cloud resources and I'm just not able to offer that for free but we're going to uh, walk through it today for, for those of you who want to see what you actually get. So when you purchase a lab from this website you go down here there is the uh, buy now button you are going to get a link and a code to come over to the um, this website here you'll say register with training key and that code that you get in your email will be used to register. Now I already have a training key and so I've already registered. I'm going to just sign in with my account. Now what you're going to basically have is this exam collection, the AZ-104 exam collection. You'll see on the screen it tells you when that code was registered and when the code expires. I'm going to go into that. Now this uh, set contains 62 labs at the current time. I will say that this number can increase or decrease as the labs are added to or archived because they become out of date. Now I'm going to go over to the uh, AZ-104 uh, exam profile and I'm going to start to look for a different um, topics that I want to learn about. So this is how we're going to link what you're learning about in the exam with the labs. So let's start with, with RBAC, okay? So I'm gonna go over here into the labs and I'm gonna search for RBAC. Now there are uh, three labs that come back in the result for RBAC. Now keep in mind, again, there's probably a hundred topics on this exam. It's quite a, a lengthy exam. And so, and there are 60 labs, so not every topic is going to have dozens and dozens of examples. But we have two options here. One is a guided option. Guided option is basically going to tell you step by step what you need to do. So it takes, you have 30 minutes. You need to do, um, set aside 30 minutes of your life to set through this for guided set. And the advanced set is more advanced. It's actually going to tell you to do something, but it's not necessarily going to tell you, click this link, click that link enter this value, you're going to have to take some um, more expert steps in order to get an advanced lab done. So uh, can you implement Azure Platform as a Service Security? And this is going to use the combination of RBAC with web apps in or and tied to an Azure virtual network. So you can see in this type of lab, there's a combination of RBAC web apps and, and uh, security for web apps. That looks interesting. So I'm going to click start. Now you only get three shots at doing each of these labs. Unfortunately, because it is using real um, Azure time, you know, you're not gonna be able to do it an infinite number of times the, the labs, but there's 60 labs and you can do each of them three times. Here, this one is giving me 45 minutes to get this done. And there's no way to pause this lab. So you can't, you know, do 10 minutes of it and then come back to it later tomorrow. You're, you really want you to set aside this time and to do it. So now I say start. Now I will say while this is being set up that this content is uh, copyrighted content. And so I'm not able to provide the details of the labs, the text of the labs separately or for free. Um, I'm just giving you a demonstration right now of what it's like. So I clicked start and now I've used one of my three um, attempts at this lab and I say get started. Now I'm going to see two screens here, two frames. One is going to be a Microsoft Azure portal and the other is going to be the lab itself. Okay. Now I'm not going to use any of my own accounts. I have a lot of accounts here um, to log into the portal. I'm going to say use another account. I'm going to copy the user ID that's being given to me by the lab and the password that's being given by the lab. Now we, I won't save these things. 
I will say that it's been my experience that sometimes it does take a couple of minutes uh, for the lab to get all set up. So this is where we start to go through the instructions. Make sure you're signed in as this, which I am. Use role-based access control to allow a developer to manage certain resources on a resource group by adding role assignments for the developer. The developer should only be able to manage the following resources. So this is the, again, the advanced level. So this is giving me an instruction and I am going to go through here and I'm going to have to set up RBAC on these accounts. Resource groups. This is the resource group. Go under access control. I can add a rule assignment. All right. So we're going to go into storage account contributor, I guess. Do this one at a time. So storage accounts, web plans, websites, and networks. The interesting thing about this is going to be when we say validate. So uh, I'll do this particular work. We're granting the correct rules to the developer account. And we can see here that there's this check button that will go and verify that we did what it asked us to do. So I can uh, click now I've done storage accounts, web plans, websites, and networks on the resource group level for this user. So I can say check. And it's now going off to verify that I did what it asked me to do. And there's a green check mark. I have not logged in. Now it's telling me to log into Azure as the user and try to create a storage account. So I have not actually done that. Now, if we find ourselves lost here, then there basically is a link to a Microsoft Docs website. It's going to uh, tell me how to go and create a role assignment. So if you do find yourself needing hints and you can't um, find that information, there is going to be a link to the Microsoft Docs website for that. Now I'm going to, and not going to complete this uh, particular lab, but I'm going to say end, and that's going to basically uh, close out this attempt of the lab. Now, so in similar fashion, then we can go through some other of these requirements and see that what are available. So we search for, um, we search for our back. We found them stuff. We search for storage. There are nine results relating to storage. We can get public access, private access, uh, ARM, VM storage. There's a number of different labs relating to this. Storage tables, storage queues. Again, some of these are guided. 30 minutes, advanced 45 minutes. Looking for virtual machines. We can search for VMs see 24 results relating to virtual machines, which is uh, one third of them. So we saw an example of an advanced lab, which didn't give much instruction. Let's take a look at one of the guided labs. So we can see we have um, various levels of labs here. There is a, a getting started type lab. You can see an all hour and a half sometimes or an hour uh, to get familiar with Azure. I'm going to get into the guided set. So create a uh, configure a virtual network service endpoint 30 minutes. I'm going to say start on that. And we can see here that uh, we have to agree to the license. It's going to create me a virtual network service endpoint guided lab. Now my expectation here is that this lab is going to be a lot more step by step. So I'm going to copy the username and password that I'm being given. Just make sure that you're following the instructions here and say sign in. Now sometimes it does take a moment or two for the resources to be created. So 
we can see here that it's asking me the next instruction is to go to a key vault and create a, a new secret and give that a value. But if I go to key vaults, there is a chance that it's not there, but it, it might be there. So I'm going to go into key vault. And we can see that the key vault is there. I'm going to go into it. And the instruction is to create a new secret. So I'm going to copy the secret that they want to create. I'm going to say generate. Give it a name. It can have any value. So I'm going to type in an any value. Make sure that it's enabled and click create. So you can see that it's being more specific and explicit about what it wants you to do. Start Cloud Shell, select Bash, and create a new file share given a particular name. So what we can do is go into Cloud Shell, pull up the window a little bit, say Bash. Now there's no storage account related to this Cloud Shell, but we are going to say a show advanced settings. You can see that it's going to use the existing resource group, the existing storage account, but we do need to create a new Cloud Shell share. And so we're going to say file share, create new Cloud Shell share. That's going to succeed. Now it's giving us the CLI command to show the a secret from our key vault. Of course, this is going to need parameters to work. So let's just hit enter and see what Azure is going to tell us the parameters need to be. Which we, um, we know is this. The secret we want is this. And there we can see I used the word any value to show the secret. So I did get Cloud Shell to work and I did get the secret to show in Cloud Shell. Again, if you do want to um, get a hint on how to do some of this stuff, you can click the hint button. So this is sort of a more guided set. You can see step by step how to do it. So if working labs such as this interest you at all, I think it's a pretty cool product uh, and it's not even that expensive, then head over to my website, getcloudskills.com and you will be able to um, purchase a set of labs relating to a particular exam code or purchase all labs. It's a little bit more expensive, but you get over 700 labs, including Azure AWS Linux and cybersecurity, and you get 12 months of access versus only three months of access. Uh, do pay particular attention to the limitations. Um, unfortunately, this isn't unlimited access. You do get three months of access to the labs as soon as you register the code. So you can get the code, hang on to it for as long as you want. But then as soon as you go to the website and register the code, the clock starts and each lab can be attempted three times. And unfortunately, once you've started, once you've started the labs, um, I'm, my charges basically are stopped, started, and I, I can't refund it. So um, keep keep that in mind. But there's a lot of good labs. I'm going to try to list even more examples of labs that come with it in here, so you can see the full breadth of it. Hopefully, that was helpful, guys. Thanks a lot.